players of the week. Um, we are very excited to be joined here with our offensive players of the week. We got the, the man in the middle, Sincere Hainsworth. We got you, Keith Brown, joining us for the first time, I think. Yeah, and sure. Kai Hughes, the, the second time this year, uh, getting to be a regular on the show. Could you, you know, it's kind of like in the, in, the, in, the, in the opening credits, you know, he, he's gone from also starring into like the main, the main, the main set there. How we doing, gents? Doing fantastic. Uh, you know, another another week getting after it. Uh, coming back off of a very important win and preparing to go go up to ECU and play another great game. Yes, sir. Um, and look, I, I will get we'll get into that before we get started. We'll um, point everybody to we did we just did an event tonight. Um, you know, I think you, Keith, and Cecilio were both able to join the kids at Anna's place. Uh, so our charity. Uh, spotlight or, spon or highlight here. It's going to be Anna's place uh, doing great work for the kids. As you said, they brought a lot of energy. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, they came with a lot of energy. That was fun. Yeah. For um, for Halloween. So that's a cool little thing we are able to do. And also, please be sure to check out our website, ftwcollective.com. Um, you can see pictures of some of those stuff these guys have done in the community all over, as, as well as find out how you can help out the collective. Uh, so with that, let me go ahead and get started, guys. We, um, you know, Sincere, you, you alluded to it, you know, first of all, but though, before we get into the game, how was going home? Oh, it was, it was great. It's always a, a pleasure to, you know, go back to Houston and play a game, uh, especially when I've got, you know, so much friends and family who, you know, are so excited to come see me play and getting to see them after the game, too, is always a, a pleasure. So it was a great trip home, all in all. Yeah, it's, it's always better to go home and come back with a win, too. Um, no doubt about that. It, it was a tough one for a while. It, it looks like, oh, we had Cam. Cam. Cam's adjusting. There he goes. Yo. There's our last offensive player of the week, Mr. Cam Wire. How we doing, big boy? I'm doing good. How you, how you doing, Miss Jimmy? I'm doing good, buddy. Um, yeah, you know, um, you know, I, I guess – what uh, what kind of strikes me, you know, when you when you're dealing with an opponent like that, that's a the, you know Rice, you know when you watch them, they're just so methodical when they have the ball. It kind of puts more pressure. It's almost like playing a service academy. Like if they if they get going, they're going to be on a seven minute drive, right? Eight minute drive, and so you got less possessions to make things happen. Um, is that is that sort of like a, just I'll open up to all of you? Is that sort of a pressure you start feeling in the game? Like you know we're going to get less chances to to go out and score, we got to make the most of every drive, or is that just not really something that enters the thought process? Yeah, you definitely want to make them all count. Uh, you know, whenever whenever you do start to notice in the game or, you know, you're seen on film, uh, you know, preparing for the week, that's a team that, like you said, is methodical with the ball, holds it for a long time. Uh, you know, you, you do start to feel that sense of urgency. I wouldn't necessarily call it pressure, uh, but just sense of urgency with the ball and, uh you know, wanting to make it count uh, and, you know, take some of that pressure off the defense, you know, keep them off the field for a little bit, sustain some drives ourselves. And then, you know, at the end of the day, come off the field with points is always the goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, you know, I, I, and, and that we did, you know, once again, a well-balanced attack, you know, running and throwing. Uh, you'll keep, you, you, you've been in the end zone before as a runner, running that jet, you know, running that end around type stuff. But we got in there as a pass receiver on a nice, on that over route early on, long, long completion. How'd that feel to, to haul that one in? Uh, it was honestly, it felt great to uh, finally get a catch and touch down here. And like you say, uh, I, when I first ran the route, I just obviously seen the coverage was beat and then Pratt also seen it. So and once I looked up, the balls was in there and I just knew it was mine. So it was yeah. a good feeling. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that, that uh, old safe there, who, who the broadcast, I didn't realize this uh, before the game, Sean Taylor's younger brother was the free safety. He got, he got Pratt, same play, same route concept. It was Lawrence running it uh, in the second half, and he he just jumped. He jumped. I mean, he's the middle guy, man covers, middle high. He should have he should have run with the post, but he he gambled, uh, having been burnt earlier by you. Yeah. And he jumped in and he was there to make a good play, unfortunately for us. But but uh and maybe he didn't do the right thing, but it was a, it's the right thing if it if, if you get the pick the pick and almost pick six. But 
Uh, he he didn't get you. You got him good. Yes, sir. He, he on that one. Yes, sir. He had a, he made then, a great uh, play. Yeah, man. And then Makai, man. I think I think I think you got you know you were tired of seeing all these receivers getting all the edge work, man. You know you you you, you were even bouncing it on them out there. You you were kind of getting outside a little bit, but just another classic uh, performance. Now it's it's getting to be old trick, man. Four straight games, 120 yards. This one, 153, I believe it was. Just Talk to me a little bit about what what was there, what was working for you, um, what was the key to success for you uh, out there, running the rock. Uh, yeah, so uh, you know we watching the film and stuff, the offense. Uh, we just know that we're a right defense be running, so uh, we prepare for it. You know, because they basically basic good calls for it. Um, and then you know O line, you know they did their thing. You know, open holes for me receivers, uh, good good blocks. You know. The whole team is a good team effort. Yeah, I, I thought I thought he really saw it there. The game, in many respects, was way closer than the underlying numbers suggested it should have been. You know, I mean, it was something where we really didn't struggle moving the ball all game. Um, but again, le- less possessions, and then you know we broke down a few times and had to kick field goals instead of scoring six. Um, mm-hmm. But with less possessions than that, and then and then the one turnover. I mean, you know just the where it happened in the game it just it, it it ended up being a close game but when you look at them it really kind of dominated i thought we had energy like to your point i thought we had good energy and effort all game really you know and look the big boys cam and sincere y'all can talk about this i mean they, they had some big old boys out there you know i was kind of impressed by their size but it looked like they struggled to run with us a little but but i mean they, you know they had some big old boys y'all had to move around to open up the holes for my man to get 153 out there yeah, they yeah they was pretty big, but as I always say, you ain't too big to be moved. <laughs> you know we got some dogs. We got some dogs too. Hey, they, they got dogs, but we got dogs too. We got we, we got a few, man. We uh, we we got a whole pack. <laughs> Our dogs are always ready to run too every Saturday. Yeah, know that. So Cam, you hit him. You hit him with some of that GT counter, man. Yeah, yeah, we've been uh. That's been like our bread and butter going, going like coming along throughout the season, like establishing the run game. So mm-hmm. that's what we're gonna continue to be dominant with and throughout the season. Yeah, I saw you know some duo in there and and, and whatnot, but mm-hmm. like that GT kind of is always as a tackle. I was talking to Ra Ra about this last week, and in the lost episode, we lost the audio. Mm-hmm. But I was we were we were talking about the beauty of the play as a tackle because look, you got you got one of two things, Cam. You you either you either pulling, and if if Makai is is timing it up right, and and we're not moving too slow, my problem is always moving too slow. It's usually my fault, not the running back. But if I'm moving fast enough, look, that linebacker ain't got nowhere to go. He's got to get to get to the ball carrier. He's got to go through me. So that yeah. makes my block a lot easier. Uh-huh. Or if I'm if I'm play side man, it's a down block. Down blocks are the best. Yeah. <laughs> so can't lose with that as a tackle. That 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 play is way more pressure on the interior guys who might have to make a little tougher uh tougher block tougher reach or something but for us man that's 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 all money all the time huh yeah i don't, I don't know man sometimes you got to deal with those four eyes in there and just dig oh them yeah up. okay yeah you're right yep yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah back in my day man everybody was a you didn't get a lot of these odd fronts it was like pretty much everybody was four three you know uh-huh. and uh that's so right. was always a three ten. <laughs> Life was a lot easier back then. <laughs> Didn't have Instagram. <laughs> Only had to deal with three texts, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. So, um, so gents, I mean, you know, uh, like just here it is, you know, it doesn't matter what the final score is. It's 1-0 and is what it comes down to. We're now sitting at 7-1 opportunity awaits, you know, East Carolina. Last time we were there, didn't go so well. Uh, sincere, I guess you were the only one that was part of that one, right? All, all these other guys are are too new, but um, yeah, it was that was a rough one, and, and it's time to exact some revenge. I'd, I'd say, huh? Oh yeah, you know, you know what I always say: the revenge tour continues. And yeah, shout out to Joey. Absolutely. You know, he always, I always got to shout him out every time I say it, but you know that that's going to continue on. Every you know, there's a lot of teams in the conference and rejoin the conference too that we've got some history with so whenever we uh you know whenever we match up against somebody and this opportunity to get a little bit get a little bit of get back 
It's a, yeah, that's right. It, and look, man, I, I and I don't know the, their year they're having. They may not be as as rowdy as normal, but usually get a pretty lively crowd out there at East Carolina. They come out to support the Pirates, and they always ready for a fight. So we, we're gonna have to bring it to them. You get the, the dogs will be ready, uh, you Keith. Hey, yes, sir. I was just thinking to tell you, we need to let everybody know the dogs always coming. They want what we got, and we coming to you know. We always right. coming to stand on business. That's right. Look, look, the, the target on the back. You know, y'all gotten used to that. That y'all, y'all now comfortable wearing that target, and uh, you, you know, you can get everybody's best shot. You can get see some wrinkle that you hadn't seen on film yet. I mean, that whole thing. That just all comes with the territory of being the hunted. But uh, you know, it's one thing to hunt; it's another thing to eat. Right? Yes. Sir. They got a we lot of work to do. If we they want to eat. Too. <laughs> we hungry too. We hungry. Yes. Sir. That's right. Well, well, gents, thank you so much for joining me um, here at the uh, Jimmy O Show. I'm gonna let y'all go. It's late at night, but uh, y'all get your rest, get get a good week of work in, and uh, I look forward to watching y'all on Saturday. All right, Jimmy, appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, guys, good to have y'all on. Appreciate thank it. you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. All right, guys. All right. Popping right in. Look at my guys. Look at this. And then we got uh, we got Jay Bo's gonna be joining us. Cam Hamilton will actually be coming to everybody later in the week with Kelly and on, on the Fear of the Wave cast. We'll make that quick announcement for everybody. But we'll get Cam. He's gonna do an interview with us. We're really looking forward to that. Um, but right now, I got two guys that I keep seeing over and over and over again. Man, these week these player of the week shows. You know, y'all can share. You can share the love with with the other guys. Shoot, we try we try to get more people in there. We got so many good players that I'm surprised we don't change this week. You know how I go. There go Jabo right there. <laughs> yeah, and we lost Lance, but we got Jabo. <laughs> Jabo. What's they up? finally they took you off your player of the week probation, man. Man, I mean, you know, I'm just trying to do what I could do to help the team. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you might have made it earlier a couple times this year. I don't know. I mean, but just wasn't on the Jimmy O show. But this is the first time we talked since the preseason. Nah, definitely for sure. Not yeah, yeah for sure. I, I, I feel like you made it, but it was one of the weeks where your class schedule and my schedule didn't line up until you were on the other show. We something. uh, we did a show. Oh, we did one earlier this yeah, year. Yeah, in the season. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I know what I had you in the preseason. I could talk to you for all day. No, oh, you're right. You're right. I, I remember now. And of course, your your counterpart, your counterpart over there, Mr. Lance Robinson. How we doing, Lance? I'm doing good. Can you hear me? Everything all right? Can you hear me? Yeah, man. You're good. You're good. Good right, sound. Yeah. I got yeah, both nah. of you. I, I got I got the I got the the bookends of the defense right here, and I got my guy <laughs> who was living in the backfield all game long, Devin Deal. Yeah. You you think these opponents get tired of seeing you living behind the line of scrimmage, disrupting everything? I mean, I would hope so. You know, he's trying to make <laughs> their life hard. Yeah. You know, well, you know what was it? What was good uh, and uh, impressive? And I've seen you do it before, but we did a little bit more just because of their scheme. You know, hyper efficient offense, not even looking to get the ball more than five, eight yards downfield. I mean, just boom. The average. Average time to throw for JT Daniels is like would be above average in the NFL. I mean, the kids are sitting there, boom, boom, read quick. And so a lot of drop eight, right? And and so we saw you back. We, we saw Devin out there in coverage quite a bit uh, on Saturday, doing a good job, moving, looking real limber, man. Hey, I'm trying to do my Lance and J-Bo impression, you know, I'll be passing <laughs> <coming. laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> those, those guys out there uh, – uh, put on a performance as well. Um, yeah, you know, man, look, I, I was, I was, I didn't know exactly what to expect out of Rice. I knew the guy wasn't very mobile, but like, you know, was a experienced passer. I mean, I gotta say, I was impressed by, um, by his performance overall, but like, you know, at the end of the day, we took care of business, you know, really in, in, in when you look at the, the game as a whole defensively, yeah, you know, he, they picked up the first downs here and there, but guys, no explosive. One, I think it was one play over twenty yards for their yeah. offense all game long. Yeah, I mean we uh we practice like that though, man. We try to go to practice and like you know practice hard every day. Like if you come to our practice, you gonna feel it. Like we're trying to go hard. Like that's the goal. And of course, like we could be better, but.
but you know it's a lot of things we could do better but that's our goal is to try to get better at practicing harder you know finishing practice stronger so just uh putting it all together man we still haven't played a complete game and i know i know you you seen it then like and i know the fans want it they waiting on it and i mean we want it you know we working hard for that so uh it's coming, man. I promise it's coming. We just got to keep working. It's, everything takes time, and, you know, just can't get impatient. Just got to keep working. Can't can't get mad. No, absolutely. Yeah. Look, it's always a work in progress. Go ahead, Lance. Yeah, and I, and I definitely, like, uh, Coach Woods has showed us today, like, you know, like, we are hard on ourselves as a defense and even as a team. But, like, uh, even, like, the, the last game, like, we're holding teams, like, a, like below their average. So like even mm-hmm. though like we are hard on ourselves, like he showed us that today, like it is something to hold our hat on, but we do wanna play a complete game and put it all together like Jimbo was saying. Right. Well, you know, and, and kind of was alluding to, but like if you look look behind the numbers, at the end of the day they had two hundred and seventy two yards of offense, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, anytime you hold a college team under three hundred yards, you you it's a good defensive performance. They had um with this quarterback that before that last, very last pass, they, you know, they caught us in a little <coughs> pressure, pressure, got a one-on-one. They took advantage of it. It's fine. You know, but like before that, their longest completion, even after the catch run after the catch was 16 yards. I mean, it was just a bunch of short stuff. And then by and large, mm-hmm. it was like consistent with our game plan. Like we were like, all right, look, we'll give you the quick completion. We're going to come up and tackle. And, and make the tackle and you know we could we had a few missed ones here and there and that's what y'all talking about got to get better make yeah. more complete game but at the, by and large i think we kind of executed what we were trying to do I mean, sometimes you just got to tip the hat to the opponent for for doing what they try to do um but you know from what i saw you know you guys gave them problems i mean and, and so an interesting stat that you know the you know coach Fritz uses the pff right and um that daniels had only Three percent of his passes all season long. This goes to my buddy Jake gave me these stats. Three uh, percent of his passes all season long were were called turnover worthy throws. You guys caused he twelve point one percent of his throws against Tulane were turnover. I'm sorry, nine point something. It was three times. It was nine point one. Yeah. It was three three times what he, his rate for the rest of the season was. So I mean. Devin, that speaks to the pressure you guys were able to get. I mean, he's getting rid of quick, but y'all was still bothering him. And then, of course, the tight, tight coverage we get from the guys on the back end. So, you know, lots of good positives to come out of that game for sure, Lance, to your point. Uh, definitely. Uh, Coach Chapman always says whenever the coverage or whenever the rush matches the coverage, good yeah. things happen. And, and that's what I love about, like, like chasing greatness. you never going to, like, you'll never catch greatness, you know? This is not something that's really attainable, but that's why I love chasing it so much. Because you're always going to look in the mirror like, okay, what can I do better? Okay, what can we do better as a team? Like, even if we're playing our best ball, man, we're still going to look at it like, all right, but that wasn't our best game. You know, because you're chasing greatness. Whenever you're chasing greatness, it's always going to be something that throws you off. It's going to be something that's like, okay, that's not greatness. You know, you're always going to raise the bar higher and higher. And that's what setting the standard is about. And that's what chasing the standard is about, chasing greatness. That's right. You know, that's that's similar to what Coach Rod always, uh, Coach Rich Rod, when he was our office coordinator back in the 90s, you know, like, he's like, look, man, the goal here is to to play a hundred, you know, perfect game. You you ain't ever going to get the perfect game, but that's always the standard, right? Yeah. And and that way you always got the same thing to measure yourself against, right? And you always you always got something to attain. You always got something to shoot forward to, mm-hmm. but then you also got a, a, a you know the same man measure that independent upon circumstance, right? Right. And and I think that's some of y'all's key to success. I mean, to be honest with you, is like when you see these situations where momentum and stuff starts going against you, you guys are kind of like, you know, mentally at a different level. Like y'all don't y'all don't seem to be affected by it as much as other teams, you know, when, cause, cause all season long when plays had to be made to, to win the game, you know, y'all made them. Yeah, um, so, yeah. So, so big, big dev, man, you know, you're looking forward to a quarterback that, that don't get rid of the ball so fast. You ready to get in there and hit, hit him with that stab and the swim and the spin and the whole thing and wreak some more havoc. I'm definitely looking forward to getting after the boys in the ECU. We haven't really watched a ton of films, so I don't know what 
what challenges or what they do offensively quite yet, but always excited to go put pressure on them because, like like we said, the coverage is matching the rush, so I know he ain't going to have people open. So I just got to do my <laughs> job to help them out, and we're going to have fun. Pat, all of us up front, we're going to go eat. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, look, I look forward to watching y'all do it, all right? And, uh, you know, man, look, y'all, y'all don't be strangers. All y'all are uh, repeat I would I don't want to say offenders, that's a bad word, but y'all like a yeah, uh, yeah. repeat <laughs> guests, you know. Uh re- repeat players of the week. Uh you have multiple time appearances and uh I appreciate y'all doing that and I appreciate all the hard work you put in for Tulane. I can't look forward to watching y'all do it some more on uh Saturday, man. Yes, sir. Definitely thank you for the support. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Hey man, how was the uh by the way, before I let y'all go, how was the uh Anna's place thing tonight? Oh, that was amazing. The kids. I was sweating. <laughs> <laughs> they were working, y'all. Yeah. yeah, we took some nice pictures, though. I took some real nice pictures. Cool, man. Yeah, and so, so our fans, I mentioned in the beginning, I mentioned at the end, but I was mentioning at the end of the segment too, y'all. Uh, you once those pictures, we'll get them uploaded. They'll be on the site. Y'all can see some of what, it, and it'll be on social media as well. But you'll see what our guys are doing with some of the kids around. This is the best part of the job. Is is letting letting y'all make their day but to see how much joy y'all take out of it i mean it just speaks to the character that y'all have and and why i enjoy supporting you so much uh, they definitely made my day <laughs> very good man well y'all look y'all y'all enjoy halloween don't eat too much candy we got we got a game to play on saturday all right yes sir all right man appreciate good it. to see you guys see y'all thank too. you have a great all right, all right you too How you doing? <laughs> he is. Yeah, I miss yeah. you. What? No, no, you there? You good? Yeah, oh, there we go. We good. Yeah, man. Missed the interception. Yes, sir. How you doing? And, and missed the big hit on the special team. Then you got the interception, and then you you followed it up with like laying somebody out on the special teams. Man, Coach Mac, he be having me teed on the sideline. <laughs> he be giving me all that energy, so I gotta I be trying to just execute for him. Yeah, you know what's interesting when we get uh, Mandela in here. We uh, um, Coach Mac, Coach Mac's son played at Mandela and I's high school. I don't know if you knew that Mandela and I are both St. Charles Commons. Hey, Mandela never told me that ever. Yeah, you know, yeah. Kind of tight. He never told me that. <laughs> yeah, now I don't think it was at the same time. We got to check that with Mandela. I think I think Coach Mac's kids might have finished before Mandela got there, but. It was definitely after me. I'm old, man. You, you, you know. No, nah, you're not that old. You're not that old. Not at all. <laughs> uh, so, but look, we also got to give Casey some love, man. Casey. Um, That's my brother right there. I love Casey. Yeah, Casey, Casey. Casey kept those kicks inside the field of play, allow y'all to go down and get down and dirty. Down. Time, every time I say, Casey, put it in between that numbers, I promise you I'm going to go get them for you. <laughs> every time. That's what I love. That's my brother right there, for real. Him and Will. I love my kickers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love them. How you been, though? Doing well, man. There he is. Speaking Casey, up, we're just complimenting up, you, man. Hey, what up, guys? <laughs> we're just complimenting you, man. You you let these guys go down and work this week, man. You didn't just kick everything through the end zone. Uh, you know, I trust them. I got a DJ. <laughs> uh, I got a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, there he is, Mandel. How y'all doing? What's up, Comet? Hey, look, DJ and I were talking. You never told him that Coach Mac's son was a, was a fellow Comet? Oh, no, I didn't. I, didn't. <laughs> I told you about that holding out secrets. I don't like that. Now, yeah. now, did he overlap with you at all? <clears throat> What'd you say? Did he ever? Did he overlap with you, or you came? You, uh, I came after him. Came after. Yeah. He he was between the two of us. Yeah. Okay. I just knew he was affiliated somehow, and, and you know, he's got stories with Coach Monica and all that. Um, yeah, that but, was the uh, first thing Coach Mike let me know when he got there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, man, look, I, well, look, I, I was talking with DJ and Casey about it. We, we First of all, the, the real MVP of this segment of the show is Casey because every week we come on here to talk about the special team players of the week, and every week is like every kick went through the end zone. So – you know, for a fan watching, I can't see all the great work they'll do it because there ain't no tackles. Well, this week, you know, Casey allowed some balls to be returned. He look, he pinned them right. 
Like, right. So like they, they're receiving it inside the five between the numbers and the and sideline. So a bad place to try to return it. But both of y'all got big hits, uh, big plays on special teams this week as a result of uh, the fine kicking efforts. Now, Mandel, I've got to be honest. I know something's telling me yours was on a punt return. We only punted once, though. So maybe it was a kick. What was it? No, it was kickoff. It was kickoff, yeah. Mm-hmm. We only had the one punt, you know. Poor Will, you know, he don't give any chances to be on this because we don't punt very much. We, we're, we're like top 20 in the country in the uh, fewest punts <laughs> per points or whatever. So Only two times that game. Yeah, I thought it was only once, man. Was it two? I think it was only one. I think we had was the it? interception. I think, you know, I think we had the interception and the, 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 the that and then the last drive at the end where we – Intentionally didn't score. Yeah, got a tackle. Yeah, it was it was only one because we were going for it on four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just it was it was a, it was a crazy game because it was limited possessions. So, so right. because because when Rice actually did something, you know they they're slow. They, they snap it as you know from defense. I mean, they snap it at three four seconds on the clock. Yeah. I mean it, that that first drive of the second half they had was like seven and a half minutes. So I mean you know yeah. they had a good we were already quarter. halfway through the third quarter before we get the ball. Yeah, they quarterback was real good, though. I, I give him his props. He 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 was kind of smart with the ball. He made that mistake when he threw that pick to me, but otherwise else, he was real like smart where he want, he knew where he wanted to go with the ball though. Mm-hmm. You know, I give him credit though. Um uh the um uh, I give y'all credit. I was talking to defensive guys about that. The the stat turnover worthy throws. You got the one turnover, but like we tripled his rate. Over, really? over the course of the season, he only three percent of his throws are considered turnover worthy. We had nine point something. So that's Speaking to how tight the coverage was, how good the pass rush was, even though you, it don't always show up when somebody's sitting there throwing it. You know, I mean, they throw five yard hitches on it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, but yeah. So, so man, I mean, you know, you know, business. Let's just back out just a little bit and talk about it, man. Business trip, man. Going to Houston, you know, got the target on your back. Just, uh, so, yeah, just kind of go around and each tell me about your approach, you know, understanding that you're always going to get the opponent's best shot and, and what it takes for you to sort of, you know, kind of come through on the right side of this thing over and over again. Uh, I just feel like going in every week, like, you know, every opponent will give you your best. Like, that's what the coaches tell us all the time. So going into it, you just know that you have to play better than them. So. In order to play better than them, you have to give you all uh, from Monday leading up to the game. So I feel like that's the only way to prepare ourselves fully for game time and be ready to overcome that hill and mm-hmm. climb that hill, climb that mountain on Saturday come. That's right. Yeah, kind of going off what Mandel said, just kind of unexpected, unexpected. You know, two weeks ago, UNT hit us with the onside kick. So mm-hmm. just kind of being ready for whatever anyone's going to throw at us and – just kind of focus on what we do and what we do best and kind of just do what we do, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, Um, and my whole take on it, I just like how – like I really feel like we outwork a lot of teams, and, like, especially in the special teams unit, and I know we're speaking on this right now, like, I can't even remember, like, even a Little League, like, any team that I have that we really master, like, situations, even, like, not just – but just special teams. So, like what they saying, we'd be very prepared going into the week and going into the game because we practice every situation that could possibly happen. I don't know what Shane be coming up with these situations <laughs> from. <laughs> but, you know, he, he, you know, he the master of the situation. So, I don't know where he come with these situations from, but I, we'd, be, we'd be very prepared and we understand the assignment when, it, when, it's, when it's out there. They ain't never been no detail that Shane ain't ever thought of, man. Oh, no, Shane. Yeah. They don't. Any walk of life, <laughs> you got anything to do with football? Shane thought of it. <laughs> no, anything. One thing about Shane: if Shane say anything to you, he's right. <laughs> Telling you, don't argue with him. He's right. <laughs> yeah, and, and look before we get going, man, Casey. I noticed it and figure out how I'm gonna say it because our guy Hudak has been so perfect and so automatic on every snap. You know, there were a couple of. Couple sort of high snaps you had to handle out there. Good job putting those down, taking care of business with that too, man. Got to give the holders love when they earn it. I appreciate it. You know who that's one of the best, so I trust yeah. him. I know he's going to give me a perfect snap every he time. So hard, and you know, just put it down yeah. for Val. I don't know. 
It's so cool, man. I mean, you know, it's just like, like to your point, DJ, like the detail orientation, but like, you know, like no detail on turn. I mean, the fact that, I mean, I got to tell y'all, man, before y'all showed up, before Coach Frisch showed up, I mean, there was some years we watched that. We can't get a snap right. Yes, and right. when the snaps right, we can't. I mean, there was games where two to three snaps were over, over the head or so, so uh, slow that the punts were locked. And it was just like, you can watch the, you can watch the, <laughs> the ball flight it was like slow pitch softball like like this ain't good <laughs> you know in the moment and like just from the snap the hold the kick the the coverage the execution on and so many fronts has been so such a pleasure to watch and and i appreciate y'all doing all all you do to make it such a fun experience being a two-lane fan these days yeah, yeah. that you support us really like <laughs> You know, yeah. you know, we try to go out there and put on the show every time. We need the fans. We need all y'all. Y'all bring the energy to us. Yeah, no yeah. doubt, man. For sure. Well, um, well, guys, let, that, that's going to do it, I think, for this show. Before we go, though, we're going to hit them with the roll away. But before we go, um, let's make sure people know to go to ftwcollective.com. Find out about all the stuff we do. Uh, you talk about support. This is the best way, most tangible way to support these student athletes is to go to our website and and contribute to the collective you can also while you're there look out uh it's just all the great stuff they're doing in the community all the different uh service activities they engage in that that you help with and and it's it's a really cool thing to be a part of and uh it's it's really my pleasure my honor to sort of be one of the people that's that's helping push it forward but um but y'all be sure to check us out and, and check out anna's place uh go to their website just type in anna's place and google anna place new orleans uh, you see what their mission is and what they're doing with the kids. Uh, we had a great little event there tonight. Uh, so with that, till next time, roll wave. Roll wave. Roll wave, baby. Appreciate you. Have a good night. Thank you. Well, look, Casey, you see we got a question for you there. Casey, what do you think? Man, he's one of the best to ever do it. What did he have, four or five inside the ten? I don't know. He won them that game, though. Yeah. Or if, I mean, he won talk about game. a crazy game. Damn, the yeah. Giants had seven yards passing. Seven. Yeah. No way. <laughs> and the, and the, the most the most important play in the game was the punter with the eleven the, with the with the four or five balls inside the ten. That's how they Morris won the said, game. Morris said won them that field position game. That's right. Seven yards is insane. Seven, <laughs> like like Lance's number, not seventy. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I had turned that game off because I couldn't watch it either. Yeah, because I, I seen when they um the, the Giants had the ball and uh, Saquon just burning the clock out. I said, "Oh, that's over." I changed the game and everything. When I come back, I see the Jets kicking a field goal. I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy.